Please uh, stand, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the meeting. We open each meeting uh, with hearing of visitors. That's an opportunity for anyone to be heard in front of the school committee, the superintendent and myself. Uh, and uh, you just sign up before the meeting starts. Three minutes, um, no response from the school committee. All matters are taken under advisement, but we do pay attention very carefully. Uh, so first I'll invite up uh, BEA President Kim Gibson. Good evening, Mayor Carpenter, Kathy Smith, School Committee. First of all, I want to just take a quick moment to thank all of you for ratifying the contract back on April 9th. I was unable to be here for due to a personal situation. Um, but I want to especially thank Tom Minicello, Lisa Plant, Judy Sullivan, Kathy Smith, Mike Thomas, Kathy Moran, and Attorney Bresnahan for all the work you did on the, on the contract. We spent well over a year in negotiations, and I felt like it was a great process. Um, a lot of difficult conversations were had, but at the end of the day, we came to a, a great agreement for the district, um, which I think is evidenced by the fact that um, for the first time in about five or six years, we may not have a RIF. <laughs> and so it's a wonderful settlement. Um, but I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the team. My team has um, said that they really appreciated the dialogue that we had during that time, as difficult as it was at times. Um, I also want to make you aware of the fact that on May 16th, we'll be going into Boston for a rally, and there is room for any of you to join us on the buses. We have a bus leaving at 2.30 and one at 3.30. Anyone in the community is welcome to join us on the buses free of charge. I just need to know by Thursday, if possible, the numbers this week. Um, so you can call my office, let me know if you're interested in attending with us. But again, it's part of the advocacy for getting better funding for our schools. Um, and I thank Superintendent Smith for allowing the teachers to get onto the buses on time. So that's all I have. And I want to thank you all for all your hard work with the budget this year. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Kim. Could I make a, a statement, Kim? Do you mind staying for a minute? Uh, one of the things I think people need to know is uh, going back to our previous contract, and I think we began that in 2014. Um, Kim and I worked together uh, with our teams. It was the first time interest-based bargaining was actually done in this district, which is very different from adversarial bargaining. You spend a lot of time, there's a lot of face-to-face -face meeting, a lot of interests are put forward, and, and many times you come to agreement on things you would not have had the opportunity to do. Uh, back then, when I look at that contract, there were pages and pages of corrections, things that hadn't been looked at in years. <clears throat> so not only was it a lot of work, and I want to thank you, Kim, especially as I'm winding down, because what people probably don't know is we actually went to a number of things around the state and talked about working together with the superintendent of the school committee and your union president, representing over 1,400 teachers at the time. And it was no easy task to be able to do the training that we did. We had an excellent uh, facilitator in Ron Sugar, and it has benefited the district, I think, more than we'll ever know during, little did we know in 2014, what we were going to encounter down the line. So uh, when Mr. Sullivan thanks all of us for hard work, it, it is, you know, it's school committee, it's our mayor, it's, you know, superintendent, all of our leadership, and most importantly, it is our teachers and our staff that do that hard work every day. And, and this is, I was going to talk about it later, so with you here, it is Teacher Appreciation Week. And, you know, all across the country, you know, teachers, again, I, I, I think all of us could take a moment and I'm going to ask you to think about some teacher that really made a difference in your life. And I thought about it today. And I can think of my first grade teacher who made such a difference in my life. Wanted, I wanted to be a teacher from the minute I met her. And I know every one of you has somebody that you're probably thinking about right now that made a difference in your life. So thank you to all the teachers that you represent in our wonderful district from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for everything that our <coughs> teachers do. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Um, I do appreciate those comments. It is a very difficult time with all these budgets that you've had to deal with. And we do appreciate the work you did over the last few years. And like I said, moving forward, hopefully we're rebuilding actually and stabilizing the district and adding back since we're down to about 1,250 members. So it'd be wonderful if we can get to that point. But thank you for those comments. Thank you, Kim. 
Did I mention that there would be no response from the school committee? Yes. Is that, is that, Mayor, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> <laughs> do I not get to attend my last three meetings? <laughs> okay. Um, well, normally there's no response from the school committee unless we suspend the rules, which we would have been happy to do for the superintendent had she asked. Um, I'd like to invite up now uh, Leah Serena, please. I'm just having fun with you, superintendent. Good evening. Ooh, you might have to cut me off. Um, my name is Leah Serena. I attended the Arnone South and Brockton High. Um, I'm also a teacher in Boston, where I sit on the negotiation team for our own interest-based bargaining. Um, I am also now a parent of a child at the Hancock. When I did attend Brockton, I was probably one of the proudest BHS graduates ever, said senior class speech, was involved in everything, loved Brockton High, um, Brockton as a system. Ever since I became a parent, unfortunately, my thoughts have changed and I have not been satisfied here. Um, so I came here today just to specifically speak on parent engagement and the racial inequities that I see in Brockton. Um, first, my son was at the Arnone, and I put him there purposely because I went there and I wanted him to go to the school that I went to as a child. Um, I removed him last year after many controversial conversations with administration and his teacher. I called the superintendent's office several times. I never spoke to you personally, um, but other people in the office about my lack of content there. Um, there was a moment where I asked the teacher who she was teaching for African American History Month and she told me, I'm sure you have no one different, Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King. Not only would I was offended, but I was deeply upset that those are the only two black people she could name. Um, there was also a time where she sent me the second grade standards when I questioned something that she was teaching. I teach second grade and I've been teaching second grade for seven years and she sent the standards home to me in the mail. Um, again, very offended. I teach second grade, I know the standards. Um, Recently, or Friday, he went to his TAG interview. He's now at the Hancock. Um, and I called the school and I asked who was gonna go on this trip with him to the Angelo. And I was told that the principal was gonna go on the bus with him. Friday when he came home, he told me that nobody was with him um, during this movement to a different school. Part of me understands it's a school bus. Children attend school buses without a monitor all the time. It's another school where everyone is quarried and they're all the same staff, I understand. but. I don't know, there was a school shooting today, another one. God forbid there was something at that school and my child was there, who that he knows and trusts and has a relationship was going to be there from him, one. Two, nobody told me that this was going to happen and if I knew that I would have driven him myself and I would have stayed downstairs because I don't know anyone at that school and I think that that needs to be more clear. Um, so now I'm at my second school in Brockton and still uh, not happy with communication. There was an incident in his school earlier this year where seven kids were suspended and he came to me and he said, Mommy, you know what? The four black kids in the school got three days and the two white kids only got one. And I called the school, completely don't understand how he knows these things, might not all be true, but no one ever got back to me about how this issue was dealt with. And I do think that there should have been communication to the parents if seven kids in one class are getting suspended. I do think that there should have been um, adjustment counselor to go in and talk to the students if they're feeling this way or at least have a conversation with my son if he's feeling this way and I never got anything back. Um, so I'm really close to taking him out of Brockton which would really kill me. Um, so I'm hoping that in the next few years as you are going into a new year we can do more to engage parents and be racial, competent, racial competency trainings at these schools so that we can keep children there, especially children of color. Thank you, Leah. All right, let me get my agenda out. I'm sorry, sure, Mayor. After giving her a hard time, I had to borrow the superintendent's agenda. Um, okay, after hearing of visitors, our next piece of business is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is a mechanism in which the school committee is able to take an entire block of routine business and uh, deal with it as one agenda item in order to expedite the meeting. However, before we vote on a consent agenda, 
any individual member of the committee may request that any item be removed from the consent agenda for individual discussion and deliberation. So at this point, I'll ask if any members of the committee would like any items removed from the consent agenda. Seeing none, then I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda. Motion made, properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? You got mayor. Consent agenda is approved unanimously. Okay, at this point I'll hand the meeting over to the superintendent for her report on teaching and learning. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, tonight, I, I like when we can always start out with some very special recognitions, and I'm going to invite a, one of our young students to come up with his mom. So I'd like to invite Joe Michael Garcia Padilla and his mom, Carmen. Please come up. So, Joe Michael, it looks like your microphone is on. Uh, Mom, can you please put yours on? Thank you. So this is when we have a wonderful story to tell about the wonderful kids that attend the Brockton Public Schools, and it's amazing to me all the time. Uh, and I just had an opportunity to uh, talk to Joe Michael. Uh, Joe Michael, you are in sixth, sixth grade? grade? Yes. So new to the Pluff Academy, which houses our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. He has a very proud principal, um, Michelle Nesrella, sitting up there watching over him. And as Principal Nesrella always does, when something happens in the school where a student needs recognition, she immediately emails all of us. So we are at the central office, the superintendent, the deputy, you know, many of our central administration staff, and these stories really do make our day when we receive them. So Joe Michael was in his class when one of his uh, young uh, classmates uh, started to choke on, we thought, a piece of candy. A rain pop. A, a rain pop? Yeah, she was choking on a rain pop. So what he did was not to panic. Uh, I'm not sure if you yelled for help, you might have, but the first thing that he did was jumped into action at a very young age in an emergency situation and did what we all know to be the Heimlich maneuver. I asked him where he learned that. I wanted you to tell me it was in your health class, you had really studied it, but he told me that it was something that he has seen, uh, whether it's with family or talked about uh, in your family. And the best news that he told me, and any of you that know me, I asked him if he had an EMT in his future, and he told me, not to offend anyone, guys, he told me he wanted to be a firefighter, and I was so <laughs> excited. <laughs> so, Joe Michael, we are so thrilled, and um, I'd like you to have an opportunity to talk to us a little bit about the experience. Uh, like that. Can you tell us what happened? So, um, we was in fourth period, and we had a, um, a sub in the class, and all of a sudden, I hear her trying to cough, and her face was turning red. So. Um, I asked the teacher for help, but she just stood there and just watched me um, do the Heimlich ma ma I don't know, maneuver. Sorry. And then um, I rushed her down to the um, nurse, and the nurse took over. Okay, and the candy came out. Yeah, the candy popped out. So, so you did an excellent job, and we're very, very pleased with your sensibilities and your call to action. So on behalf, I think Mayor would like to call him up. Sure. We have something special, so Joe Michael, will you join me? So on behalf of all of us here in the Brockton Public Schools, congratulations and thank you for your emergency action. And we have another special award, and uh, this is a special award that is given out by the Lions International Club in Brockton. And this is uh, for one of our very own, uh, Janelle White Blunt. 
Janelle, would you come down and join us? So Janelle is a Brockton Public Schools uh, Administrative Assistant and been with us for quite a while. It's always pleasant to be in your company. Uh, I know uh, how important <coughs> the job is in the Brockton Public Schools and the great job that you've done. So we are able to honor you. So the Lions International Club, along with the Brockton Lions Club, recognizes individuals by bestowing on them an award that is named for its founder, Melvin Jones. This fellowship award is the highest form of recognition and embodies humanitarian ideas consistent with the nature and purpose of lionism. The recipient of this unique award becomes a model because of the exemplary service to her club and the community for which it serves. And Tobias Cowens, to quote him, said, as we all know, Janelle is as modest and as humble as they come and we are honored to recognize her and her efforts to helping those in our community who are less fortunate. So on behalf of all of us, Janelle, congratulations on a job well done. And before I ask you to come up, would you tell us a little bit about your service in the Lions Club to those that might not know the wonderful work the Lions Club does in our community? Um, as a club, we help those in the community that can't um, or need assistance with eyeglasses and hearing aids. Um, we help the homeless um, by feeding um, them and providing backpacks and hygiene kits. Um, we've done quite a few things in the community. I can't list them all, but it's a pleasure to do so. And when you think about some of those basic needs, and we know with our school children, it's obviously important that they can see what they're learning, that they can hear what they're learning. And many times these simple things that we take for granted, you know, many of us, you know, there are families that are unable to afford that, and the Lions Club for years has always stepped in and has done an excellent job, as you said, supporting those that are less fortunate. So the mayor and I would like to invite you up, and we're very pleased to offer you this award. I also want to give a quick shout out. I believe you have an upcoming fundraiser for the Lions Club. Is that correct? Yes. No? Fun, fundraising night? Texas, Texas. Texas Roadhouse. So for everybody to join them on Wednesday, May 29th from 4 to 10 p.m. And I believe that any 10% uh, of the uh, money collected that evening would go to the Lions Club. Okay, so very good. We'll get it up there, and hopefully if people have an opportunity, Texas Roadhouse is delicious, and they're a great partner in helping us out with uh, fundraising for so many things in our community. Very good. And next, another recognition. Uh, usually you would have uh, Dr. Moran at this time uh, who oversees our administrative internship program um, recognizing and introducing our uh, administrative interns. And she is not feeling well tonight. Actually, she can't talk. So we told her that we would take care of this for her. So I'm going to ask the administrative interns, can you come down at least front? So I see them up in the corner there. I'm going to ask them to come down. So as I call your name, I'm going to have you come up and stand front. So sit there, please, to start. As I call your name, I'm going to ask you to come up in the front here of the mayor and I, because on camera, your students and people uh, in our school community will be able to see our administrative interns. The thing that we always like to talk about when we introduce our interns is this is a very exciting project and we take for granted that this happens all over in many school districts. And this has been a collaboration for, for as long as I can remember and I've been here for 42 years in the district that we have had administrative interns. And this is an opportunity for our teachers 
to come into a role, usually it starts right after April vacation, where they have an opportunity to work in an administrative function at central office, in our schools, and it's their opportunity to decide if they want to become educational leaders in our district or wherever they choose to go. The talents that they bring are immense. And when you talk about struggling to, you know, with personnel and needing people for projects in our district, there are many things that come out of these administrative internships. I can tell you, and I always say this every year, and this will be the last time I guess I'm saying this, but I did my administrative internship in 1999. I worked on the policy manual, which to this day is a prize possession. When I see it, I get very excited thinking about not many people would be excited about policy, but I was very excited at the time. And I also have to tell you, and I think I mentioned it to you when we first met, you have to know that I was the assistant principal as an administrative intern at North Middle School and knew that that was never going to be the job for me. <laughs> so, so there are things that you learned. Our new superintendent that's coming on board also was an administrative intern. He will tell you about his experiences, actually working as luck would have it in the deputy superintendent's office at the time, Mr. Anthony Luizzi, which many of you I'm sure remember. So there are so many of you out there. I look at a lot of our executive team members. I think just about everybody has gone through the administrative internship program. So we are very proud to recognize you this evening. When I call you, would you please come up and I'm gonna share uh, what your location is. So Jennifer Colburn. Jennifer uh, works as a teacher, a special needs teacher at the Downey School. And she is presently, I'm gonna have you turn Jen and face the camera. <laughs> And she is going to be working with Principal Diane Lynch at South Middle School and Dr. Heather Ronan in the Office of Teaching and Learning. We're very excited. And I uh, always say, many of you, if you recognize Jen, she was a wonderful pitcher on our softball team many years ago. So a Brockton High grad. Next, I'd like to invite up Soraya Presame Kalixt. And Soraya is a school adjustment counselor at the Baker School presently. She is working with Principal Darlene Campbell at the Davis School and with uh, Mary Ellen Corain, Director of our Wellness Department. Congratulations, Soraya. Next, we have Geronimo Fernandez. Geronimo is uh, a bilingual technology education teacher at Brockton High School. He is working with Dr. Barbara Lovell at Asheville Middle School and will be working with the Deputy Superintendent, uh, Mike Thomas. Next is Owen Hamilton who is a computer teacher at the Huntington Therapeutic School, and he is working at the elementary level with Principal Natalie Pohl, yeah, don't, you, in front of us is fine, at the George School, and with Dr. Julianne Andrade in the Office of Teaching and Learning. Next is Jennifer Mills, an instructional leadership coach at the Brookfield Elementary School. And Jennifer is gonna be working with Principal Valerie Brower Foote at the Baker School, and also with Laurie Mason in the Special Education Department and with Karen McCarthy in Title I. Jen, they gave you an extra assignment. <laughs> and we have Julie Morgan, our school psychologist. And Julie is, gonna, is working with uh, Principal Cynthia Burns at the uh, Keith School and also with Deputy Superintendent Mike Thomas, and you also have three, and Sharon Wolder, um, the Office of Student Support Service, our, our Chief Officer of Student Support Services. Next is Joanne Jody Nelson, who is an instructional resource specialist at Brockton High School. She is working with Carlton Campbell at uh, West Middle School, Principal Campbell, and also with our, our Chief Officer of Student Support Services, Sharon Wolder. And last but not least is Doreen Pinkham, who is a math teacher at the Davis School, and she's working with Principal Michelle Nazrella at Pluff Academy and with Marguerite uh, Masson, our Director of Community Schools. So please join me in congratulating our 2019 Administrative Interns. <laughs> take a picture with them all. Yeah. So we'd like to get in the middle and take a picture with you. And I will let you know that our administrative interns will be doing a presentation at the end of their internship projects to share with our 
uh, executive team members and uh, district administrators, principals, you know, their projects, and it's always exciting to see the work that gets done during these uh, short eight weeks. So congratulations again. And uh, next, Mayor, I would like to uh, invite up uh, Principal Mary Beth O'Brien from the uh, Gilmore uh, Extended Learning Time School to share with us. I think you're putting on a presentation for the Grow Hope organization. Yes, do you mind if I invite I, I am so pleased to have Sesse Johnson. And Seamus Clifford. And Seamus. Very good. Here, thank you. Not that I need that microphone, right? <laughs> I was in lunch duty today for about three hours because it was MCAS, so I don't really think I need a microphone. Learn to project. Um, so thank you for having us here tonight. Um, we are here because we wanted to share with you some great work that we're doing in partnership with the Grow Hope organization at the Gilmore. As you know, we're an expanded learning time school, and we have a great deal of resources that come into our school that are funded through our expanded learning time budget. However, that does not extend beyond the additional hours of the school day, which are about eight and a half hours. Um, so what we're looking to do is expand our after-school opportunities for our students because that's a safe place with caring adults where we can provide even more enriching opportunities for our students. When the superintendent um, started about three years ago with, well, actually it was longer than that, Kathy, but um, with asking community partners and schools to do more with less. Uh, we reached out to a great deal of our community partners and Grow Hope was one of them. Um, and they really dug into their pockets. They worked on getting some fundraising initiatives started and they came to us uh, to do something they're passionate about but also meet the needs of our expanded learning time goals which is that of bringing STEAM education to our students, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. So we're here to share with you a project that we started this year. My name is uh, Cece Johnson, and I am the uh, Executive Director of Grow Foundation. The mission of our organization is to work with uh, community organizations, private donors, and also uh, to provide quality education and life skills for youth within the community. And by doing that, as Ms. O'Brien already said, we President working with the GAMO school and also with the honor school. But with the GAMO, we're providing um, after school programming for coding. And Grow Hope was established in 2007, and we did receive our file one c 3 status in uh, 2008. We are comprised of board of directors, advisory board, and uh, we have volunteers as well. And uh, the goal of this program, as you can see, is to provide mentorship and coding program at the Game Mall, and also to enhance the enrichment opportunity within the STEM program at the Game Mall. And our goal is to expand that as well. As I shared before, for those of you that don't know, the Gilmore is um, the only expanded learning time school in the district, which means that we do our best to add additional time, but we also make sure we do it right. Um, with that said, it offers professional development for teachers, enrichment opportunities for students, as well as additional time for um, educational opportunities. Uh, however, we're also aligned a great deal with Brockton's Promise goals, um, and by adding community partnerships such as the YMCA, Bridgewater State University, which we've presented to you before in the past, um, and now Grow Hope, as well as some others that are also expanding throughout the district, uh, we also align ourselves to Brockton's Promise. So with that said, um, we offer caring adults and opportunities 
opportunities to serve where with this program it uniquely partnered with Brockton High School. We have Seamus Clifford who is um, the te technology teacher at the high school but very familiar with coding and more advanced coding than our students are perhaps doing. Um, but also there are three Brockton High School students that come and they're actually being paid to work and mentor our students in the coding disciplines and also affording our students with uh, the ideas of where STEM can take them along a pathway, hopefully to middle school, and then what opportunities are available to them in high school. It offers a safe place because they're at the Gilmore after hours beyond the school day, as well as effective education under the STEAM disciplines. A healthy start, thanks to Chartwells, as we do offer um, an after school snack. Uh, and finally, effective education, as I said, with STEM pathways. So now Seamus is actually going to talk to you about the real work, which is, um, we'll, we'll go back to this in a second, uh, which is what he's doing with the kids. So we use code.org, which offers free curriculum. Um, we can just go, you can pick any, any um, curriculum you want. We chose one for um, second and third graders, which was good for our skill level. Um, and they also offer hour of code activities, which are just one hour activities where students go and they have a challenge. Like today we did a dance party where they had to go and sync up music and, and use programming and, and computational thinking to try to solve a problem and, or create something, which is pretty cool. And we're about to show you a video of just some of the work we're doing in the classroom. So who you saw in there were Jayla Galvez and Taylor Diaz. They're both seniors at Broughton High into my programming courses. Um, Jayla's going to UMass Lowell next year. Um, she's a computer science major. And then Taylor's going to go to Bridgewater State. He's either music, computer science, or education. And, and the other thing you saw in there was a robot dash. Uh, it's one of the things that we played with. Uh, it's not part of the code.org curriculum, but it works pretty well with a lot of the concepts that we learn in code.org. Um, and then for the future, what we're looking for is to collaborate with Massasoit and Bridgewater State. Um, so hopefully they could offer us some students to come help teach. Um, they, they would do a work study program to help with um, funding. And with, with more teachers, we could, we could expand to more than just one day a week. We're doing one day about an hour, hour and a half um, a week. And we could do two to three days a week, which would be very, very helpful. Um, get these kids learning more and more and more and getting more practice, and then hopefully expand to grade four as well. We're just doing grade three right now. So before we move on, I just personally want to thank Grow Hope for seeking out the Gilmore School um, to start this program. We actually, one of the slides that gave you a few more details is when we started this, we only thought we were going to have about 15 students that would be interested, but we actually had 34. And our school is fairly one of the smallest ones in the district, but out of about 89 students in our grade four class, 34 students wanted to be in this program, and we actually had to turn a few away. Um, with that said, the Grow Hope funded the entire program, which supports 
uh, the, the Brockton Public Schools, of course, support the resources and the technology resource in the building space. However, Grow Hope is really allowing us to employ the people to work it. And you really need the right people there that are motivated, that are excited, and that have the background experienced in STEM, which is certainly Seamus. So that's been wonderful. Um, and we also want to thank Bridgewater State University because this is a pipeline. Uh, this upcoming summer will bring us to our seventh summer footbridge program, which is a two-week summer camp funded solely by Bridgewater State University and some leveraged funding from the Brockton Public Schools, where our Brockton um, students exclusively for the Gilmore spend two weeks full days 8 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. over at Bridgewater State um, where there are four fourth grade classes, two fifth grade classes, and now we've uh, last year introduced one sixth grade class, which then is a pipeline into the bridge program, um, which we started this back in 2009 when Mrs. Sabo was the principal and we were beginning our efforts with ELT and also finding promising partners. So as we start to think about the future for our students and the ways in which we can really get them excited to learn and get them fostering really some strong goals to see themselves as college students, career focused, and especially in those promising roles in the STEM fields. It's organizations like this and starting points in third grade that really start to build that excitement and keep our students in the Brockton Public Schools engaged, motivated, and focused on the right things. Um, so I wanna thank you for continuing su to support this. I wanna thank Grow Hope as they have a, uh, a golf tournament in July. It's July 15th on a Monday. I know some of us will be working, but those of you that aren't, if you're interested, um, it's always great to get out there and golf for a good cause, even if you're not that great like me, but we can practice, right? It makes perfect. Um, and that Grow Hope's um, golf tournament actually funds this coding program and allows us to make things happen for our students. So I want to thank you. I want to thank Sesse, and I certainly want to thank Seamus after a long day at Brockton High. He comes over and works with elementary students, which is a challenge on its own. So thank you. Any questions? <laughs> yes, Mr. Minalcello. How was it introduced? Uh, what initiate? I, what did it, how did it get, become initiated? I believe three years ago. Correct me if I'm wrong, Superintendent Smith. Um, Sesse reached out to the superintendent and asked how he could do more in a time of budget crisis. And uh, we sat down and the Gilmore School was invited to that meeting. Um, and then we just started to toss some ideas around and we moved forward from there. Thank you very much for identifying this as something that uh, our students would benefit from because obviously if um, this program weren't available, it wouldn't open, open doors for students in terms of um, interest for later on. I mean, this basically sets the tone at the elementary level, you know, to go on and move on and to develop. And, um, you know, there are so many um, jobs, career paths available with regard to science and STEM that really this country um, it has a, a, a plentiful amount of jobs, but in terms of qualified individuals, programs like this, you know, I think expose our students to, to possibilities that they um, maybe wouldn't would never think of um, because doing something with coding you know and having fun doing it is what really turns a child on and sparks that interest so uh, thank you very much thank you thank you I also want to thank uh, Sase Johnson and his uh, wonderful group who not only do fundraise and they also recognize and invite uh, many of our teachers and school administrators once a year usually in the fall they have a gala and they honor our profession, they honor the need of children and supporting our kids in the community. And that just speaks volumes of your organization. Um, and you know, again, Seamus, it's wonderful to have a high school teacher be able to come down and work with our young students um, and see what's possible and to bring your high school students I just think is, is terrific for these kids to see those role models, to hear these kids are going on to college, and you can bet that's conversation that goes on. So that's when a community comes together, you know, whether it is a nonprofit organization to raise funds, to support our schools, 
And Sese, I would hope uh, that there are other organizations out there this evening listening to this presentation and looking for ways to support uh, kids in our community that'll come back to all of us in ways we don't even see at this point, you know, their futures. So thank you very much for everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, one second. Yeah, Mr. Sullivan. Just one second. I just wanted to thank you, Mary Beth, for uh, this has been a year of budget cuts and budget crunches, and uh, just that it was a great idea for you to come up with to seek out Grow, was it Grow Hope and Chambers? It's at a time when we really needed something like this. And I just wanted to thank you. Nice job. Very good. Thank you. And uh, next, again, under teaching and learning, I just want to uh, let the school committee know that we have been talking about our turnaround schools. One of our schools, the George School, was able to qualify to put forward a turnaround grant. Uh, it was submitted on April 30th this past week. Uh, a lot of hard work in collaboration with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, with our own um, teaching and learning teams here in the Brockton Public Schools, Dr. Cancel, Karen McCarthy, Dr. Julian Andrade, uh, June Saber McGuire, um, I know we had our teachers working on it. Um, I know our Kim Gibson and our union has been working actively uh, to number one, apply for the grant and hopefully to receive the grant so that we have some support for our turnaround. Uh, Natalie Pohl will be coming before you at the next school committee meeting and she'll be uh, talking about some things, not only about the turnaround plan, but some things that she wants you to address as we move forward with our global studies school. So I look forward to welcoming her next time. And I'd also like to invite in for more good news, I'd like to invite um, our Chief Officer of Student Support Services, Sharon Wolder, to come up and we wanna share some exciting news uh, from the district and also I'd like uh, Sharon to be able to, to share with you a little bit more about what's happening. So for the past number of years, I know Karen Watts and a team <coughs> has been applying for what I always hear is the Bar Foundation Grant. And during this time, it, it's a grant that supports a number of innovations and to become a finalist is a big deal. Not only is a lot of work in preparation, in being a visionary, in talking about innovation, but Brockton for the past couple of months, and there really wasn't much we could say, has been back and forth with conversations, with face-to-face -face meetings, with one of our administrative uh, interns, Jody Nelson, and uh, Sharon Wolder actually went and met with the Bar Foundation group, I think just a little over a month ago. So we just got some wonderful news, and I'd like Sharon to share with you, we are a finalist going forward. So she covered it. Um, we did apply and we had it on your agenda in March um, to approve our applying for the Bar Foundation. Uh, what it provides is an opportunity for us to partner with Bar and Springpoint, uh, which is a nonprofit organization that focuses on doing high school differently. And it would be a $150,000 planning grant if we were to get it. Uh, they will make their announcement. Uh, at the end of June. And so we did complete the application process, got calls to, to a conference with them for clarification on things that they needed to, to hear from us. And then we were invited uh, with a very short turnaround window to go and spend the day uh, going through a very intensive triangulated interview process. And it was, it was with the Bar Foundation uh, as well as Spring Point. And so it was presentations, it was interviews, it was um, uh, document reviews and engaging in conversations about uh, the way we envision education going in the future and targeting students who, uh, for the most part, we know don't function well in schools for a variety of <coughs> reasons. And so they fall academically behind and how to catch them up, ensure they get a diploma and get them on a college path. And so uh, after months of intense work, uh, we did get notified that they are presenting us to the board as a finalist. And so we will hear back from them at the end of June. Uh, and when we hear back from them, because I'm gonna be positive about it, when we do, uh, then we will have 
uh, we'll start working on it in July. It, the turnaround is very quick. They expect us to be ready to go. Uh, so while we're waiting, we are putting some things in place to make sure that we have a team of people ready to start the work. So that will be, uh, that's the Bar Foundation. And so that hopefully will be back to, with great news for you uh, at the meeting in June or July. <clears throat> uh, one of the other things, before I move on, is there any questions about that? Excellent. The next thing uh, we want to talk about is a grant that the uh, Massachusetts Attorney General received, and it offers us an opportunity for them to come into our schools and do training uh, on violence prevention and mental health intervention. And so we have connected with them. They will come in and do three trainings in all of our middle schools and high schools. They're starting next week at the high school uh, with Start With Hello, and that is training all students and training staff on the warning signs of isolation in schools. Uh, we have the SAD clubs who are going to be the point students and the adult in each school to continue the campaign and keep the work moving forward. Next fall, they'll come back and they will do uh, Say Something, which is training students again and teachers on when they see certain things on social media, uh, when to recognize what are threats and who and how to report those threats, and so to empower students uh, with that information. And their final training will be on suicide uh, prevention and intervention. And so the warning signs of suicide and how to make sure that they are reporting that and getting the proper help. So they are going to work with us uh, for the rest of this year and into next year and provide us with a number of resources that our SAD clubs will then continue the campaigns and continue the work in the schools, uh, really focusing on violence prevention and suicide uh, intervention and mental health intervention. Questions? Oh, go ahead, Mr. Sullivan. Just one check. The, the training, do they go into the classroom and teach the kids? Or? Uh, they are coming, and we'll, because our schools are so large, they'll end up in the auditorium doing the trainings in the auditoriums, with, and they'll do it by grades. So they won't have an entire school in the auditorium at once. They'll work with grades at, at a time. So next week at the high school, for example, uh, they will start with grade 11, and then they'll go over. And the smaller schools, they can probably do the full school, like Champion and, and FDA. They'll be able to go in and do the entire group of students. When they come into the middle schools, they'll do it again grade specific, and so that way it's it's, it's as small as we can be at each school. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a question? Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you for the presentation. Do you have a schedule? And if you do, can we get a copy of that? Because I'd like to sit in and see um, firsthand what our students are going through. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of social media, a lot of things going on with different age brackets, and I think this is wonderful that we're um, you know, opening their eyes and, and having them feel comfortable, showing them the signs to come back to us and um, help us, help them. So I would definitely like to attend some of those if I can. So on the 15th is the first one at 845. Uh, they'll be here at the high school, and then at 10 o'clock they're going over uh, to the Keith Center. They are working with us on scheduling the rest of them, so as soon as I have them, I'll let you know. Uh, and that would just be for the uh, start with hello, and then next year it will be the other two. So we'll make sure that once we finalize the schedule with them, uh, we'll get that to all of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Sharon, for the report. Um, are, there any, um, are there any programs out there that um, also include uh, familial support or parental involvement, especially with regard to like social media, you know, informing and helping parents know what to look out for. And um, actually, aren't we doing ours next yes. week? So, right here. Okay, great. Oh, this Got program. It. right in front of you. Yeah. And the resources that we'll be getting, we'll have some uh, parent guides as well that we'll be able to provide it. Uh, open house and uh, parent conferences, but next week uh, in a, within our own district with uh, the Brockton Police, the school police, um, and uh, Mr. Thomas and a group of us got together and the school police will do a presentation um, on social media and we'll have uh, parent resources there as well. 
I'm talking about during the school day, if there are parents that can have time, that can actually become involved with the you know, violence uh, type of programs or um, you know, parents who might be afraid that you know, a child you know, is thinking about suicide and those sort of issues that you're talking about addressing. Um, you know, sort of an all, I guess an all-in program where if, if there are other family members that a parent might identify that they can also sort of get educated from this type of a program instead of just the students, mm -hmm. that, that family can be invited to or included. So I will connect back with um, the Attorney General's office and see if they do something specifically for parents. Any time a parent has a concern about the, the safety of their children, they're more than welcome to call my office, call the school. We have adjustment counselors. We can connect them with outside resources as well. So if there's an immediate concern or immediate threat, obviously they should reach out either directly to uh, hospitals, mental health services, police, um, if they're con just concerned in general about making sure their students have resources, they certainly should communicate with the schools and we can do that. Um, and I will look to see if they do a program specifically for parents. I know they have some resources that we can give to them, but uh, in the planning that they provided, they didn't have something that was just uh, designed for a parent workshop. But we can certainly work on one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you very okay. much, Sharon. Okay, uh, moving on to advocacy update. Um, I know I spoke briefly about it at one of our subcommittee meetings, but I wanted to share with the community and the school committee that back on uh, April 22nd, myself and uh, Chief Budget Officer uh, Aldo Petronio um, traveled to Lowell this time to do another uh, tale of two more cities, uh, Brockton and Lowell, and actually some of the surrounding communities. It couldn't have rained hotter that night. Um, and of course we've been in rain for the past month, but um, there were close to 150 <coughs> or 200 people that came out in the Lowell community. The Lowell mayor was present, uh, the interim superintendent and her uh, leadership team uh, asking and answering some of those same questions that we continue to ask about the foundation budget, about the foundation budget review commission, uh, recommendations made and the struggles that each district is having. And if you go back a few years ago, Mayor, you and I were certainly, you know, calling, you know, people to to task here about what our district was dealing with. And it is really interesting as these years have gone on, and we continue to go out and visit other urban districts. You're seeing suburban districts. You know, school districts are struggling, and it's a broken formula, and it needs to be fixed. And I know a lot of people are working on this, but again, uh, we're continuing to keep this advocacy up and continuing uh, to build partnerships, and we will continue to do that and report back to you because I do believe it is making a difference. And um, also uh, for our budget update this evening, so we met in our uh, finance committee meeting, and I do know that we have a recommendation, Mr. Minicello, from the school committee on our net and our non-net school spending for yes, FY20. This evening we met uh, prior to this meeting and went over the um, current state of the budget. Um, we discussed what um, the, a level funded budget would look like and uh, also talked about the needs of the district with regard to non-net school spending and transportation. Um, at the uh, meeting we uh, took a vote and um, voted to recommend with regard to net school spending for FY20, uh, $173,319,870. And with regard to non-net school spending, $12,478,498. Um, obviously these numbers are uh, based on uh, what uh, we would like, but uh, we understand, Mr. Mayor, that you, um, you know, still have yet to finish your budget. So those were the numbers that um, we feel that we would require to have a level services budget at this time, and um, uh, that was the um, recommendation. So um, at this time, I guess we would like to uh, uh, ratify that vote um, for the record. Um, so with respect to fiscal FY20 uh, for uh, net school spending, the school committee would recommend uh, the number, as previous st previously stated, $173,319,870. And with regard to non-net school spending for FY20, 
twelve million four hundred seventy eight thousand four hundred and ninety eight uh, dollars. Can I get a second? Second. Any further? Oh, oh sorry. That's okay. This is, I'm, think I'm yeah, in right ahead. I think I'm in finance. I think I'm in finance. All right. So we've motions on the floor properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Recommendation is made and received. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And also, I just want to reiterate that that comes with um, looking at our budget, looking very closely at it, and finding ways, even with the deficit that we are facing, without layoffs across the board, with uh, not just our teachers, but you know all of our support staff. And at this time, you know, again, we will look as the state funding comes in. We will continue to look at. Um, all our different funding and we'll obviously work with the city and we will be able to build back those things that we put aside right now to be able to to balance this budget and to recommend this to the mayor uh, and to work together to, to see what we can do so thank you and next is our um, summer uh, meeting dates our school committee summer meeting dates the dates you have proposed in front of you and I know a lot of you had looked at your vacation schedules but it would be Tuesday, July 16th, would be your one and only meeting in July, and your meeting in August is August 20th. Do you need a, a vote to? Do we need to a vote to adopt the schedule? Yeah, I think, I think we need to vote that in. Okay, so July 16th and August 20th? Yes. <clears throat> okay, we'll entertain a motion to set our summer meeting dates of July 16th and August 20th. Motion to um, adopt Tuesday, July 16th, 2019, and Tuesday, August 20th, 20, uh, 2019, for the summer school committee meeting dates. Okay. Second. Motion's made and properly second. All in favor? I guess we have our summer dates. And for the okay. record, those would stay at 7 o'clock, correct? There's no, yep. Yeah, unless otherwise, mm -hmm. 7 p.m. And also, um, you have with enclosure 13, this is your first read on the Brockton Public Schools supplemental calendar for the 2019-2020 school year. And that includes um, your in-service days, which we didn't have in the first uh, calendar that we put forward. So these include, and you can take a look at release time, uh, professional development for uh, pre-K through eight, pre-K through five only has a number of dates. And we do have days for our high school in-service days. You see dates on there for your parent-teacher conferences. Uh, also, your graduation date is on there for 2020. So we ask that, again, you approve the first read. I don't think, don't think you need to do a vote on a first reading. Just right, bring it up another time. And um, items to refer to subcommittee. You do have uh, a policy uh, meeting coming up, I believe, towards the end of May. <coughs> So that is our <coughs> policy committee meeting. Um, at this point here with our um, finance uh, subcommittee meetings, I'm not sure if you want to continue them until we see if money becomes available. So we'll have uh, Melinda reach out and we'll come up with some dates depending on, again, information that we're getting you know, from the uh, state budget. I, I just don't see us having any additional funding until that time. Agreed. Okay, and the last thing I'd like to end with, Mayor, is, um, and Melinda, is that set to go? Our yes. happenings in the district? Let me just switch seats. So I like to end each school committee meeting uh, with so many things are happening in the district. And before I forget, because I don't think I put that in here, this weekend is your spring musical up at Brockton High School. Uh, I'm going to gather there are hundreds of students that are taking part, whether it's backstage, whether it's on the stage, singing, dancing, putting on a world-class performance, I'm sure, and it is going to be newsies. So we're very excited. Uh, I believe the first performance is Friday evening. Saturday evening and then Sunday it's a little bit earlier is it I think it's six on Sunday seven o'clock on Friday and Saturday so please get your tickets uh, I know a lot of our students are selling them what's that oh my goodness I should know is it 7 30 all right so 7 30 Friday night uh, and Saturday night and then six o'clock on Sunday so this is Mother's Day weekend uh, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. It'd be a great event to take them to, as I said, uh, just such a great performance. 
So let's, uh, let's take a look at our highlights. <coughs> So here we have, and you were just introduced to your administrative interns. I think that was on their first day when they came to uh, Central Crosby Building. And again, our administrative interns you were introduced to this evening. And we have uh, congratulations to our regional uh, science fair. Um, congratulations to Peter Johnson, to Jessica Anujan, to Abigail Bertocci, and to Binsky Analysts who from the Pluff and North Middle School have qualified uh, for the State Science Fair. Congratulations to all. <coughs> we actually had last week, or two weeks ago, the Brockton Public Schools Week of Service. And this was, um, okay, let me go forward, Melinda. This was wrapped around a week of celebrating April 22nd, Earth Day. Uh, April 23rd, Brockton Public School Choose to be Nice Day. World Wednesday, celebrating global understanding. Thankful Thursday, what are you thankful for? And ended on Friday uh, the 26th and I believe uh, May 3rd as a follow-up, to tip your hat for Homelessness Day to benefit School on Wheels, who do a wonderful job supporting many of the initiatives of our children and our families that find themselves for a period of time homeless. They provide tutoring, they provide support, they provide any kind of uh, extra thing that a student needs to make sure that they can be successful in school. So every year, uh, this is actually the second year we've done this, students pay and staff pay a dollar to wear a fun hat and all of that money goes to benefit School on Wheels to support our students. And you'll see some of the pictures coming up. This was um, Earth Day at the George School's After School Book Club and I believe it was on wildlife uh, preservation and they did dioramas, which are always fun. Parents know how much fun this is when you're helping your children. Everybody has done a diorama. And thank you to our Chatwell staff. Chef Mike put together one of my favorites, so these are all vegetables honoring Earth Day with a, a delicious uh, dish of ratatouille for our students. And the photos below are Choose to be Nice Day again at the George School. Students left anonymous nice notes for friends to look at when they needed a pick-me-up. And this was in one of our grade three classes at the Baker School, uh, Karen Trucci's class, where a parent that heard about the event, and again, it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but she actually paid for every one of the students in that class to wear, um, to wear a hat that day. What a great donation. Thank you to that parent. Uh, and maybe that's something that we ask people to help us out across the district and grow it next year. And our South Middle School staff, we're getting ready for MCAS and what better ways to encourage our students. I love the one, Rock the Test. That's my favorite. So teachers are out there letting kids know they've worked hard all year long. You can do it and this is, this is important and this is going on as we speak. This is one of my favorites. So SNAP Swim Team is our special needs aquatics program that started actually probably over 10 years ago, probably longer. And at the time, um, we had special needs parents coming to us through community schools. Thank goodness we had somebody like a Michelle Zachary who jumped on board along with people like Claire Childs at the time, lifeguards that we had at Brockton High School. And we found time on a Saturday with some of our special needs students who would not go near a pool. And it is amazing that all these years later, not only are they excellent swimmers, <clears throat> they partake in the uh, Special Olympics, and you see a number of our students that got gold and silver medals. And they will hopefully be coming before you uh, on June 4th when we have our awards night. So I'm very excited to include them this year. Our Brockton High School uh, Jazz Concert was held on this past Saturday, uh, April, or actually less, two Saturdays ago, April 27th uh, at Brockton High School. It was a free concert, featured our All City Jazz Ensemble, the Junior Jazz Band, and the BHS Jazz Ensemble. Great tunes. I did not get the opportunity to attend as I was not in the district, but I heard it was absolutely wonderful. And here's our culinary team performing at the Taste of Metro South that happened on uh, April 24th over at the Shaw's Center. And thank you, Melissa McLaughlin. Your team does a great job. <clears throat> And our Edgar B. Davis Bulldogs, volleyball city champs, and I believe that's middle school city champs. So congratulations to them for sharing, uh, for sharing this great photo of our kids. And as I talked about, uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, again, if you see a teacher, uh, please thank them for everything that they do for our students and our families in the Brockton Public Schools. We appreciate them every day. 
and this is important. Uh, we just talked about this. Uh, Lieutenant Fadaro and our uh, mayor, our Brockton police, uh, and the Brockton Public Schools invite you to a parent meeting on school safety and security on Wednesday, May 15th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at South Middle School in the auditorium. Again, there are many issues that we're facing right now. You're talking about you know, edible marijuana. You're talking about the drug research, you know, cannabis, which has been legalized in our state, social media responsibility, uh, shot spotter at Brockton High School and citywide 911 and actor shooter training so you can hear what we're doing to continue to protect our students and our school community each and every day. It is certainly worth an hour and a half of your time. Please spread it on all your social media sites, all your PAC meetings, PTA meetings. We'd really like to see uh, a crowd. As you can see, there are interpreters. So this is open to everybody in our community. And I believe that's it. So thank you, and Mr. Mayor, that's my report. Yes. All right, so we, we do have a couple pieces of business under new business. So first of all, tonight we're going to introduce our five new school police officers to you formally. Uh, they're already here and on the job. Uh, let me just preface the introduction by reminding folks, as many people don't realize it, that Brockton is the only school district in the state that has a fully sworn uh, police department, school police department, armed with full police powers, academy trained, um, they, they perform all the same duties as a Brockton police officer. Uh, and it's become a very important part of our overall security, and particularly for the schools. Uh, over the last few years, it, we've seemed to have trouble keeping fully staffed. But with these five officers now on, we'll have 11 school police officers working, plus Lieutenant Vidaro supervising. And this equals our maximum staffing that we've ever had on the school police. So um, I think that we all agree that they play a very important role in our schools. Their presence is critical. The relationships they develop with students, I think, is important. And uh, we really feel good about this particular uh, class of new officers. So how about if I just, I'll, I'll list the names, if you could just stand up and let everyone see who you are. Uh, Darnell Campbell, Jr., Alicia Fernandez, Jonathan Drain, Michael Gomes, and Adelson Andrade. Could you please join me in welcoming them to the Brockton Public School? Mayor, I think you make a, a good point about, um, and, and I, I certainly watch them in action. Uh, not only do our principals develop strong relationships, they work with our families, and most importantly, as you said, develop relationships with our students that many times last a lifetime. So to have full staffing, at, I just said that to them when I met them earlier, it's very exciting to be able to fill our shifts, to, to have our uh, school police force and overseen by Lieutenant Fadaro. Um, I just see wonderful things happening. Yeah, this is a, a great model, and <clears throat> all of these new officers perform the same uh, job training with a training officer out on patrol for two or three months that all Brockton police officers do. So they already come with some patrol experience. 
Um, Lieutenant Vidaro has been a, a great addition as a leader overseeing the unit. Um, the school police do come under the jurisdiction on their police powers from the chief of police who designates Lieutenant Vidaro to supervise the school police. I think it gives them a great level of professionalism. They also add to the overall security of the, the city. Their primary responsibility are the schools, uh, but it is very common for school police to back up Brockton police calls, to take a call when we're overloaded and we don't have a car available. Um, they do also supplement our regular patrol force that is undermanned right now. So um, we certainly do appreciate it. We look forward to all of you uh, working with us here in the Brockton uh, School Police. And Lieutenant Vidaro, thank you. Great class. All right. Yes, this is the first read on the uh, student handbooks. You can do that. Okay, I know you had uh, in your packet, uh, and again, these are for all levels, uh, your student handbooks. So at this time, uh, are there any questions? Or uh, Deputy Superintendent Thomas and his team has, have headed up as they do each year, reviewing them, making any changes. We work with uh, our legal representative, uh, Paige Tobin, on this. So if there are any questions, now would be the time to, to have discussion. Any questions? Okay. <coughs> and I think we Mayor. also have listed under new business the uh, FY20 budget recommendation, but we've already we've done already that, done so that. Yep. that's been taken care of. So continuing new business, any members of the committee have any items of new business they'd like to put on the table? Mr. Gormley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's May, and for those of you that know me know it's track time for me and a lot of other parents in the city. Um, the high school season has kicked off. I've seen both teams run once or twice. They're having a great season so far. Um, they had the Weston Twilight Invitational Saturday that the boys went to. They did pretty well. And the, I know the, uh, the ladies team went with the freshmen and sophomores, the freshmen sophomore meet, and they did well also. Um, and last night was our first official night of track club. We, again, have a great turnout. Uh, 300 kids have signed up so far, hoping to get 400 this year. I don't know if we can fit many more. Uh, <laughs> Those t-shirts are getting more and more expensive every year. Yes, thanks to Mayor Carpenter, we have very nice t-shirts every year. And uh, this year we have bright green Representative Cassidy staff shirts for everybody so that the parents can identify uh, who the coaches are, which are the high school students and most of them are track athletes. And we're very proud of them, especially they do a great job. And we have lots of uh, track athletes, but we also have lots of students who just want to volunteer um, that are in other sports. So uh, it's the only adults involved are really Coach Rodalgo, myself, and uh, one or two other people. And there's about 30 to 40 of our students running this. So it's really, I'm so proud of it. Um, and you can still sign up. Uh, registration's open, just come on down and see us or go to the website, BrocktonTrackClub.com. And those of us that are in attendance tonight, the Harbor One Art Show is still going on. And there's some great stuff out there. And uh, I hope you guys get to go and check it out. Your daughter, Mr. Gormley. I did. Quite wanna, an artist. I didn't want to toot my daughter's horn, but. <laughs> well, you had to see. She Brett. did get first place in digital. So, <laughs> so Brett's mom was sitting under the pictures that her. My grandmother. Your great, that's right, it's your grandmother. So she said that, her great-granddaughter. And she said, I have to guard these pictures. And she was so proud. They were, you're right, the artwork was tremendous. So congratulations to her and all our artists. Okay, to do business. Anyone else? Mrs. Sullivan. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that um, today, um, Marguerite Mason from the community schools, myself and Ann Beauregard went on BCA to promote the community schools summer brochure. Um, it was mailed to every house, so parents look in the backpacks for this because it's time to sign up for summer programming. And you can go right online to do this on Brockton Community Schools dot com, I think, or dot yep, org. www.brocktoncommunityschools.com. Right, and sign up your children for the summer programs. Um, there's a lot of good programs out there with openings still for the summer. Yep. Thank you. A lot of great opportunities. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Minicello. Um, I, I don't know if people have noticed, but with regard to the art show, 
there's so much more with regard to digital artistry in both, you know, pictures as well as the pottery. Um, you know, very detailed uh, designs on on the the pottery that you know is cast in in the computer programming um, and coding used to you know develop those types of patterns on on the different uh, projects. Um, it kind of reminded me of when I'm watching those crazy, when I drive my wife out of the house or out of the room when I'm watching those car shows and they're using the computer forming the, the rims on the fancy, you know, muscle cars. And it's the same concept, you know, they're making the different patterns on the, on the vases or the, you know, the, the plates or whatever. It, it, it's all, it's a different product, but it's the same sort of technology and coding. It, it's so cool to watch. So it's like now that the art show is sort of taking on a, a different um, flavor. You know, there's the traditional painting and ink print and uh, pottery, but then there's that digital and computer side that's just uh, exp ever expanding. So I'd like to compliment the students and certainly um, the the instructors and teachers that are assisting with that because obviously you know you, you need the expertise to be able to share that with our our kids. So. It's it's great to see. And thank you to our school committee because I know you're looking as I am at some neighboring towns, people struggling again with school budgets. And again, the first thing that you start to talk about are the arts and music and, you know, no matter how tough it was, and it was tough, you know, we held on because we knew that, you know, some of these kids, this is their talent. This is what they'll go to school for. This is not an extra. Um, and we're very fortunate that we're somehow coming out of this. but and keeping things intact. Okay. Anyone else send a new business? That's it? All right. How about a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.